Welcome to the exciting and new podcast. I'm Jason. I'm Andy. I'm Dana. And we are talking about All of Me. Rated PG, released September 21st, 1984. Running time of one hour, 33 minutes. Directed by Carl Reiner, the great Carl Reiner. Passed away in 2020, age 98 he lived to. He wow. passed out natural causes. Was wow. His, uh, I him and uh, Mel Brooks, they had dinner weekly. Yeah. They st- uh, oh, really? Into, up into their 90s. Yeah, they, I saw, I forget, I was watching a documentary or a movie or something, and it showed them as uh, older guys just getting together every week. They That's would, wa- they would so watch sad. a movie and have I remember, dinner uh, together. It was really nice. Aww. Seinfeld did his Comedians in Cars with them at their house. That, who's that might house have been part of what I saw, yeah. yeah. So he went to their house mm-hmm. and ate dinner with them. That was really cool. Yeah. I like that, hmm. but... I love when you say Carl Ryan or whoever died at 98 of natural causes. I always wanted to be like died at 98 murder spree <laughs> shot down by cops. You know, it's just like, yeah. damn, like he went out in style in a, that guy. In a pickleball accident. And you're like, what? <laughs> pickleball. That's such a, like they're building a pickleball court right by, by our work, work yeah, now. Like, so weird. What? That's a thing. Well, no, like, uh, the field house, the, the soccer, soccer field is turning yeah. into pickleball now. They yeah, can make yeah more there's money a one in Hamilton they're making too. Why do we need Robbinsville and Hamilton? Why do know. we need any? I Isn't know. pickleball just and like small tennis? Like, I yeah, thought, I thought, and like, then yeah. I think there's like ten courts that fit in there. Like, is that going to be so? Packed? I, you had, like, I think they had three soccer fields in there. I'm side, going on record right now. Ways. I will. Oh, never, I thought it was just one big soccer pickleball. field. Never will I ever play pickleball. Well, no, no I mean, I'm, very I'm not going to play thing. racquetball, pickleball. No, no, I'm not going to play saying, tennis. Either. Tennis. Sorry. There's a better chance I play tennis. I wouldn't do that either. But pickleball, I'm not playing it. Uh, you want to try Carl's top four? I know we've done it before. I but don't really know like, him. Is it all directing think. or like is Ocean's 11 or 12? Ocean's or 11 is okay. in there, yes. So uh, is The Jerk or... Ocean's 13 is also oh. in there. The uh, Jerk? The Jerk, yes. And then we'll play this one. Dick Van Dyke Show, which was in there. Oh, okay. How many episodes of The Dick Van Dyke Show was he a, an actor? Carl Reiner. Yes. And how many episodes was he a writer? I don't know anything about this person. So the Dick Van Dyke show you know was Dick Van based Dyke on show, though, right? Yeah, Carl but I Reiner. don't know. Carl him. Reiner was the guy made made, made it. It was really. based on his based life. On his yeah. life. Oh, and uh, he wrote some episodes before Seinfeld was based on many, Seinfeld's but, life. Mm-hmm. The Dick Van Dyke show is based on Carl Reiner's life. I wonder why. And he that's didn't, what, uh, why Rob didn't he star in that? <laughs> Rob uh, Reiner at the age of fifteen grabbed Mary Tyler Moore's ass on the Dick Van Dyke <laughs> show. Is that his father? It yeah. is. Well, Rob Reiner's his kid. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Meathead. Would you just look him up, his picture? Uh, yeah, and I don't recognize his face. Really? I don't think Did I've you ever see seen this Oceans man before. Did you see any Ocean's movies? Ocean's um, I saw the, fir- the Ocean's Eleven. Oh, he's the old man in it. Yeah, he's yeah the I don't Heimer, remember that. Heimer Zerger or whatever the other name is. Yeah. <laughs> Saul. Um, Saul. All right, so friends. first we'll do how many episodes was he an actor in the Dick Van Dyke so, show? I feel the like Dick Van Dyke show was on for like five years, so... Maybe it was one of those shows that did 30 episodes. They did, like, a lot back then. So I'm going to say he was an actor on half of them. I'm going to say 75 episodes he was an actor on. This is a total Mm -hmm. random guess because I have no clue. So I'm going to go 57. Okay. And now how many episodes was he a writer? 100. All of them. 150. Okay. So there was 158 total episodes. Okay. I was very close. In (laughs) Dick Van Dyke. And he was a writer for all 158 okay. episodes. Oh, I almost nailed and it. And he was an actor in 32 okay. of oh. those episodes. I think he played Dick Van Dyke's boss. Yeah, so he was like throughout the whole series, but just... Yeah. Sp- I never so, saw a single Dana, episode of that show. The, the Dick that Van Dyke show... That should be watch instead of Community. No, thank you. The Dick Van Dyke show was based on Carl Reiner's life. Okay. For whatever reason, he didn't star in it. They got Dick Van Dyke to star in... I think they said... He made a joke about it, but like he wasn't good looking good, enough maybe, or something like maybe. that, he said. You know, so so. The, the Dick Van Dyke show starring Dick Van Dyke was based on Carl Reiner's life. And what was his name on the show? I'm only saying that because it wasn't Dick or it wasn't Carl. Oh, it was Rob. Uh, it was just Rob. Rob. So, like, why would you call it the Dick Van Dyke show? And, and then, then the Rob. main character would be when was Rob. This, when did this air? 50s. Oh, yeah. Black and I, white. Lucy I do era. Not, I can't. Yeah. I hate Maybe to say early this, 60s. But Maybe I'm early 60s. Not a fan I was at shows 60s. from the 50s That's and 60s. So I Nor can't. Nor should you be. They yeah. all look fake and. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I get it. When but I was you don't a kid, like Leave the Beaver? I love Leave the Beaver. I watched that once in a while, like, on reruns on Nickelodeon. I watched I Love Lucy more than any other show from back in the day, I believe. But that, again, it wasn't like. I got more into like shows from the seventies yeah, is where I kind of go back to. It was to. Um, sixty-one to sixty-six. Oh. Wow, okay. I mean, it was still black and white in sixty-six. Oh, huh? that's crazy. Yeah, 
Yeah. I, I think they Gilligan's just kept Island it. season one was they black and white. They probably just kept it that way. Oh, well, Gilligan's yeah. Island is one I watched, too, so I but guess that was that's black late. It's 66 season, through 68, yeah. I think. Yeah. Batman was right around there, 66, 66 through 68. I used to watch Batman. Yeah, yeah, but that was color. That was color, so, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, our internet movie database description dying millionaire edwina cutwater has her soul transferred into the body of younger willing terry hoskins however something goes wrong and she finds herself in her lawyer roger cobb's body together with the lawyer taglines it's the funniest movie since tootsie that was in australia <laughs> <It's okay. laughs> that doesn't count in america this yeah. one was also from australia he's a wacky lawyer she's a selfie heiress put them together in the same body and you have the funniest merger ever <laughs> the comedy that proves that one's a crowd and they say that behind every crowd. great man there's a woman but in this case it's ridiculous yeah the, it was ridiculous all right ridiculous, i like the funniest it? movie since tootsie since tootsie was like the year before I think <laughs> tootsie was, we did, we didn't we were do supposed it. to do an 82, right? It was 82, yeah. okay. So it's the funniest movie since two years ago. But, yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, that's like, because your mom was supposed to come on for that one. <laughs> I, won't, I won't allow it. <laughs> All right, we'll get right into the cast for this one. Playing Roger Cobb was Steve Martin. Mm-hmm. I don't have anything to say, so I'll let you guys talk about oh it. Oh my God, I your hatred Steve. for I him is I love Steve Martin. ridiculous. I thought it would be nice to not say anything at all if I don't have anything nice to say. All right, nice so I'll, say. Do, I'll do his top four, since you're not going to bring I'll, it up. No, I'll talk about it. Okay. I wanted you guys to talk about him first, then I was going to do the top I four. I don't yeah. have a problem with him like you do, however... I like him in some things. I told Andy that yeah. today. Like I enjoy him in only murders. I yeah. think he's okay in yeah, that. Yeah. Which is coming back like next week or something like Are that. Are you serious? I, I it's coming the, back? I saw the fan at the bottom of the TV. It's like August 27th or I something I know that like they were filming it. I didn't know if it was That's coming awesome. back That's awesome. I'm really though. excited yeah. for that. And I believe there's more people coming. Right? Well, there are, got every year oh, yeah. yeah. Who's new. the guest star? Do you know? know? I can't remember, but... How, this is was, season four, right? End on a cliffhanger like it did last... What's about call? got shot. Like the Paul Rudd season, the year before it ended with Paul Rudd getting shot... Yeah. yeah, the first, and then Jane the last Lynch episode. Gets shot at the end oh, of this one. Oh, right. That's how this one ended with Jane Lynch getting oh, killed. Oh, right, because yeah. she's his body double, right? Yeah, which is like so his, great. That's, so funny. Double. that's great. That's that's Jane Lynch to be things, Steve Martin's yeah. body double. Anyways. It's almost like she's the new B. Arthur. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Making you know fun of her because she's like mannish or something like that, but she's a great she's sport a about it. Woman, yeah. uh, she's really funny about it, yeah. Steve Martin's top four. Like, is it all old? Is it jerk? and Jerk is in there, yes. How about we did we so we we've did done, before, we, yeah. we've done him for Dead Men Don't Wear Plaid and we did uh, the Man with Two Brains, mm-hmm. which did not hold up that well. I and think. Dead Men Don't Wear Plaid was oh yeah that was yeah that was of a time that mm-hmm. movie. I know Father of the Bride was huge oh, for him. Yeah, I never yeah, saw that yeah. movie. That didn't make his top five, uh, four. I thought that would have been in or there too. Cheaper by the Dozen. Didn't they do yeah, some of those was, movies too? Yeah, and then was he was he in, in the- Parenthood. Parenthood, great, great yep. movie. Parenthood. Of all the movies you just mentioned, Parenthood yeah, was great, the best is. movie. That was really a great movie. Um, it had a great cast. Yeah. Too. Is Only Murders in a top four? No. Really? So far, you got the jerk. That's it. Okay. Oh, really? Wow. Okay. Uh, how about like LA oh, Little Stories? Shop of or, LA Stories or, in there. Yeah. Little Shop of Horrors. What did you say? Little Shop of Horrors. That didn't make it in there. I thought that that's another movie. I don't mind him in. Yeah. He's only in the small part. Really, he's the dentist. Yeah, he's great. Oh, in that Saturday too. Night Live in there? Didn't make it in there. He's in Saturday Night Live. He's just a wild and crazy oh, guy. You know what? You said Saturday Night Live, and I thought Saturday Night, Night Fever. Fever. And I'm just like, is he in that? <laughs> How about the one? Um, oh God, the one where he's the mob guy. Uh, My Blue Heaven. No, but oh, I remember that. Oh. Yeah. Who I was in my, that with him? Rick was Moranis. Rick Moranis. He's yeah. the FBI guy, and Joan Cusack, I think, is also. Yes, she's in there. She's either a, that one. I don't mind that movie. She's either Rick Moranis' wife or the girl that he ends up getting with in that. Rick Moranis. I know. I remember that yeah, movie. I remember yeah, enjoying that cool. movie. Um, all right, I'm going to give them to you. Yeah, yeah. You got the jerk in L.A. Story. You forgot the Pink Panther. Uh, I never saw those movies. I don't like those yeah. movies either. Because I like the originals. And you forgot Roxanne. That's great. the oh, great movie. Yeah. Cerno de Bergerac. Mm-hmm. With I haven't seen that in so Darryl long. Daryl Hannah. Yeah. That's a great movie, too. And then we have Edwina Cutter- Cutwater was played by Lily Tomlin. Mm, I love her. She's great. I'm I trying like to think. Of, is this the first time we've done Lily Tomlin? This is definitely our first okay. Lily Tomlin movie. Is Grace yes. and Frankie in there? No. Hmm. How about Incre- oh, Incredible, Incredible Shrinking Woman? Woman? No, I but love I that love movie. that movie. I saw that in the theater. Charles Grodin. Yeah. 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 Concepcion. She, <laughs> she gets down the uh, garbage disposal. In the disposal. garbage, yes. Uh, yeah. I love that movie. Yeah. How about uh, 9 to 5? I mean, she's 9 to 5 great. is in there. Oh, yes. okay. That's another great one. All of Me is in there. Okay. Oh, really? This one I never heard of, Grandma. 
Yeah. Oh. Sounds like it was something she did recently. I don't know when that was. And then was, was this one is from the 70s. Was she for Brady's or whatever that uh, shit movie for she Brady. did? Yeah. yeah. Tara um, saw that. She liked it. She was in Nashville, that movie, the movie Nashville. The movie Nashville. Yeah. Nashville. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I never saw yeah. that. Lily Tomlin was like, at this era, the 84 era, like she was big. Like She, she was, was on a lot big, of stuff. Yeah. And we saw her in a lot of stuff. She was on TV show, too. She was... Uh, Lay out the she? buttons, Mister. Remember she did oh, that uh, yeah, character yeah, yeah. that was, uh, was that, laughing. Was that laughing? I okay, believe it was yeah. laughing. Yeah. And then she just disappeared, like through for like twenty years. Well, she's like in her eighties. I think yeah, she she's just took off. 80s, maybe yeah. she was raising kids maybe, or something. I don't know. Who knows? Um, Terry Hoskins was played by Victoria Tennant. I knew her from. That's the blonde, the the girl, yeah. the bad girl. I guess the Where bad did guy. You know her from. <laughs> um. Uh, Flowers in the Attic. That's, a, that's in the oh, yeah. top four. Yeah, I remember that movie. <laughs> yeah, I, I know, love I know what movie. else she's from. Flowers in the Attic, the VC she Andrews. Was the, yeah. She was the, the mom, mom who was poisoning her okay. kids in the yep. attic. Yeah. You know what she was also in? in the Handmaid's Tale? I, I was going to say. Oh, yeah. She, she, she was Aunt Joy. Lydia. Or, oh, she's she's Aunt, Aunt Lydia. Lydia. Which is crazy to think, like yeah. who they ended up uh, and Dowd from uh, Leftovers mm-hmm. had her as Aunt Lydia. I'm like, man, they <laughs> cast like a relatively attractive woman in that role when yeah. in the new version. They they. Yeah, Aunt Dad, I love you. Then You're not the Winds of War, all seven episodes. That's a I don't mini know. Series. Yeah. I remember when that came and out. And then yeah. uh, she was also in L.A. Story. Oh, well, I think she and Steve Martin had a thing going after this movie. I think they were oh, they got together, together for yeah. a while after oh, wow. this because he always did that. I mean, Bernadette Peters and him were together after the jerk, and the fact that he was in real life thirty nine. I know they said he was thirty eight. I had to look it up because I needed to know what he was. You know what? His skin if you just look at his face without seeing his hair, yeah, Yeah. he did look young, but that hair just automatically ages. He was early thirties when he went, right? I mean he was always gray. Yeah. Everything I've ever seen him in, he was that never. That was the lightest. But that, he's not the even gray. I've it's ever white, seen it. White, you know yeah. what I mean? It's like, and you know what's really weird? Like, not to jump all the way to the end of this movie, but when they're dancing in the mirror, when yeah. they when they yeah. have him in whatever the hell her real name is, the the blonde girl dancing, and then uh, they go to Terry, the mirror, Terry and then Hoskins, Lily Tomlin's dancing with her. I'm like, look at him. Like, is that even Steve Martin? Like, I'm trying to like, yeah, get a look at him because he, you know, it's that reverse mirror angle. Yes. I'm like, man, the. the did they get like a stunt double yeah. just to like Probably. look like Steve Martin because he's actually dancing with the other girl over here? But at one point they show his face. I'm like, oh, it is Steve Martin. But yeah. <laughs> I remember in The Jerk when he gets a um, when they put the mask on his face. Bernadette Peter, Peters puts the mask on uh, the makeup, yeah. the cleansing mask or whatever. I mean, this is such a stupid thing, but like when they pull it off, he's got a shower cap on his head. And they pull it off, and he looks so young in that because he's got black. You don't see his hair. He's got yeah. black yeah. eyebrows, and I'm like, man, Seymour looks so good there. And then you pull the, the <laughs> thing off. I'm like, ah, I got old all he of a sudden. He did look good in this. He did I'm look really good. I'm really surprised he yeah. didn't dye his hair, even from like a yeah. young age, yeah. because like he dyes his hair. He could in, have been uh, a leading man. Yeah. in a lot of things. He dyes his hair in all, of, not all, uh, in uh, the mob. What? My Blue Heaven. He has black hair in that. Oh yeah, that's right. And I'm kind of like, why did he just do that all the time? Because. He probably even like a brown would have worked yeah. for him, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? <clears throat> I, I, it's weird that he did that because no one wants to look older, especially when they're young. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Unless you're like 15 and you want to look 18, yes. and you want to look 21, yeah. you want to get no you know? bar. That's it. You want to uh, look, you want to look 21, <laughs> and then you just want it to stop. <laughs> uh, Madeline Smith Osborne played Peggy Schuyler. That's and the that? wife. That's the. Um, that's the girl. Who's oh, that's dad. the girlfriend. Yeah. The girlfriend. Oh, I thought the one that, that breaks up with him. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's um. She was uh Chevy Chase's uh in, in the movie Funny Farm with Chevy Chase. Oh wow, was she oh. okay? Yeah. I didn't know that. I she didn't do a lot of movies. She was yeah. an Urban Cowboy. Okay. All of Me in 2010. 2010. The movie, 2010 the Roy Scheider movie. Yep. I, I think like she's the kind of girl that in the 1980s they were telling us she's the hot girl. I don't know. She, she was just she not was, that attractive. But she didn't do a lot. She didn't do a lot of stuff. So I think that's why she didn't become that it Maybe. girl. You know, Maybe. Uh, she was fine. She was just like, oh, yeah. eh, like whatever. She only has a few minutes in this movie. She's and barely she got, like, in it. Yeah. Three, third billing or something like yeah. that. Her name was way high up on the list. She's I'm like, fourth billing. Fourth there. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I was surprised how high up she was. Seeing as that, yeah. like some of the other people should have been higher. They had more screen time. Yeah, and like dialogue. Richard Libertini, who played Prakalasa <laughs> Beckenbull. <laughs> you remember him in Popeye? Yeah, he's, he played, uh, he played Giesel. Okay, I was gonna say I remember him <laughs> yeah. in that. Yeah, oh, I don't remember Popeye him. the movie with yeah. A, yeah. I don't Robert remember Williams. him in that. Yeah, that was the he was one of the um, guys that was running around in the fam in the family. Had the, if you had, if you seen the yeah, movie, you would, yeah, you would know him right away. Yeah, I've seen Popeye the movie. But I mean, if you watched it now, you would recognize him right away. But I mean, in this movie, he was the um, I don't know. You don't remember who he was? 
Prakalasa? No. He's the the mystic, the guy with oh, the whole. Yeah, well, that's not what Steve Martin was calling. He him says the whole a Hindu time. at some point, right? And he don't calls they say him something Hindu? else, and I don't know he's if it's Prakalasa. Yeah, what does he and call I don't him? know if it's... I thought he called him because he, he even asked for Prakalasa at one point. He called him something else multiple times, and I don't know if that's a slur these well, I, days. I, I, I didn't even pick I up, didn't on, pick that. up well, on it either. What did they say? I'll bleep it out. Swarmy, swami. No, it's food. No, he kept saying, "Where's the swarmy? Where's the swami?" Yeah. Yeah, I don't think that's a. I don't think Swami because I mean, Swami's a person. Maybe I today. don't know. That's why I, I think was it's like, like a religious person. Swam, or Swami. Isn't it Swami usually sometimes the ones that played it? Uh, no, the the thing that the, the snake, snake yeah. for the snake. I don't know. Yeah. And I, when he said it, I was like, snake charmer. Is that is that a, a I'm, not a nice I'm word? Sure today I don't think it is. But if it is, I apologize. <laughs> no, yeah, <laughs> I'll I don't bleep all this many instances of a saying. Yeah. Um, he was also Walker and Fletch. You mentioned that, Frank. Right? He's Frank and the Fletch. I guess that's his no, last Frank name. Walker, yeah. yeah, he's the boss. He's his boss at the. He was uh, in Ducktales, the movie Treasure of the Lost Lamp. I'm, I'm assuming that was love his voice. Ducktales, <laughs> love that show. And all of me was his last one. Um, playing Burton Schuyler was Dana Elkar. Yeah, was that the boss? That the, was um, um, that was Peggy's guy, dad. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. his boss. Yeah. Men should not be named Dana. I'm just going to say it now. Stop naming men Dana. (laughs) Yeah, that is a weird name. Except Dana Carvey. That was a good one. That's the last one who ever should have gotten that name. That was not a girl. But I hate to say it, but it's not a very masculine sounding name. So, I mean, for you, it's fine. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, I always hated that as a kid. Um, Dana Elkar from The Sting. Yes, he's the FBI agent or something like that. 2010. Oh, also, he's also yep. in 2010, huh? Okay. All of me, and he was in 126 of 139 episodes of MacGyver. Oh. oh. Never saw an episode of MacGyver. So he, I never no, watched never. MacGyver never. either, yeah. I think I did as a kid if like my mom was watching it. Yeah. I've definitely seen I it. I think it was one of those shows I was like, I just don't like this guy for some reason. He didn't, mm. you know what I mean? He had that. Yeah. It's one of those ones you like, I don't like the way like he looks, and you just think you never get into it. always on Saturday afternoons on a random channel. Like, just like, showing like reruns. Just it would be like yeah. Baywatch, and then MacGyver would come on. And like USA. Weird. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> never watched Baywatch either. I think those all those shows, I was just like, ah. They don't feel like <laughs> I never police, watched an episode of like Baywatch. Police procedural really kind of things. Either. No matter if it's yeah. girls jiggling on the beach or what's his name, Richard Dean Anderson running around. I'm like, enjoying eh, a TJ Hooker rewatch because yeah. it's yeah, actually I, a first watch. I would also not watch that either for the same reason. Just I like, like but I like chips. Drama. I like Starsky and Hutch. I liked a lot of yeah. the '70s yeah. ones. Yeah, not my bag, baby. Hey, you liked? Um, you said House was the only one that you really House watched, only, right? Like the only procedural. doctor show I ever yeah. watched. Anything that took place in a hospital, I've never watched except for House. Yeah. Same. Playing Tyrone Waddle was Jason Bernard. We've seen him quite a bit lately. Well, he was in. Um, you got it. Blue Thunder? Uh, War Games. War Games, okay. Yeah. Is this the blind guy? Yeah. Yes. Okay. He was also, I mean, I guess most famously, he was the lawyer in Liar Liar. Liar Liar, uh, that's judge, in there, yep. The judge in oh, Liar Liar. Yeah. Okay. But it's so funny because this movie had Liar Liar vibes to it also. There was obviously the scene where, he, where she, he, is. At court, and he don't get me started on the court scene because that's my I'm least just, favorite. Scene. I'm just saying, like <laughs> that remind me of like Jim Carrey in court, not being able to lie. What do you think about that scene? The court scene. Um, I. So the funny thing is, when he first gets, pos- not to say possessed by her, but she's his in is him. inside him, yeah. whatever. And he's trying to get into the limo, and then he's trying to go back in. Oh, that's the first time when you're outside. And he's, like, he's oh, doing yeah. that. I was like, oh, I hate this kind of comedy. I oh, said my the God, same dude, thing. I, I was like, this stuff. reminds me of Jim Carrey, it's and funny I for can't one second, stand. And then it's done. Yeah, I didn't like. I was just like, oh, and this then is so she, Jim Carrey. Then when coded. she did the thing in court, she's spitting, know, spitting grabbing her ridiculous. balls. Like, yeah. she knows how people act. He wouldn't yeah. act like that in court. Come on. Yeah, the spitting was dumb. I agree with that, but. Yeah. I love the scene where when he first gets possessed. See, when, and it's and funny then, for a when second. When you're going like this, and then you're going like this, and then your hand gets your other hand, and you're trying. I'm like, this is so stupid. Thank you. <laughs> I, I, hated it. I, I love that it. stuff. <laughs> um, Sel- Selma Diamond played Margo. <laughs> By the way, That's his second uh, the, the guy, uh, Jason Bernard, Bernard, he was uh, Caleb in V. He oh, was, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. While you were out. Or while you were sleeping and no way out were the other two. Oh, okay. Stop for, yeah. I like while you were sleeping. Sandra Bullock. Is that who that is in that one? Bill Pullman. Bill Paxson. One uh, of Bill Pullman. One of, right? one of them. Pullman, the one who wasn't in Tombstone. 
So Pullman. The one that's still alive? The one that's still alive. So we Pullman. just saw uh, Selma Diamond recently in Twilight Zone. Right, she the was movie. the old person the kick the, kick the, can. the can. Oh, right? the yeah. kick the can. Like, I never yeah. put that together. And obviously Night, Night Court. Court. We've yeah. talked about that. Now, um, she died during the filming of Night Court. I mean, like... Yeah, because she's th- only like, in 36 out of 100. Uh, so she died episodes, in the middle of the second yeah. season. Like, I think she died right after this, too. I feel like this came out she passed around the same in time. 85. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, she, I, th- I feel like this was, like, at the end also. And she had lung cancer. I mean, you hear yeah, her really? voice, and you're like, how many Stop. cigarettes have you smoked uh-huh. today? day? Yeah. yeah. Like, man. That like, is... Yeah. She, she woke up. She was already smoking yep. when she woke up. Yeah, you know what I mean? like, yeah. It's, like, uh. it's an amazing voice, and to smoke all the cigarettes, I but I'm jealous. It's a, that's <laughs> that voice was like you wanted to do more because it's so good. She has, that, that voice was Can so you perfect. Be a voice actor in this, please. <laughs> uh, playing Fred Hoskins was Eric Christmas. Uh, Fred Hoskins is the Terry's oh, dad. Oh, the horse guy. Yes. Oh, that he poor little fellow. He was Mr. Carter in Porky's. Oh, okay. I know him from something, but it was not Porky's I was thinking Harold of. Harold and Maud, mm-hmm. Mouse Hunt, and the Andromeda Strain. I also know he was the, I'm going to say curator of the um, theater in the Seinfeld theater? when Elaine loses the button. He's the Is one that, that Eric Christmas? He's look the that one up. that, I mean, if it's not, he looks just like him. He's the one that runs the that, theater or something I like that with that Lloyd Braun. Like, it's the uh, Institute. Yes, because yeah. then Braun's George there. sets up as Henry the Eighth. <laughs> yes, with the uh, let me hot look dog. him up, Eric Christmas. I got to look that one up. Keep talking though. While I look no, him no, up. but yeah. as soon as I saw him, I'm like, I. That's the guy with the. Oh, that's a lovely button. When Elaine loses her button, let's and see if it's him. Boy Braun Sign. thinks he's hitting on her. Yeah, it's Jeffrey R. R. Wood. Is that his character? His name is name? Jeffrey R. Wood. Yeah, okay. he's in one episode and he works at the Institute. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> I got another guy that's in the, uh, episode, uh, two episodes of Seinfeld. Oh, really? Oh, okay, you. Yeah. great. He's coming up. Um, where'd we, oh, yeah. Gail, Gailard Sartain played Fulton Norris. Oof, I don't even know who that was. I don't know who that, that was either, but he was Jerry in The Outsiders. And he was also in Fried Green Tomatoes. Mm. Uh, who was Fulton Norris? I don't know. I mean, he, you know, he could have been one of the people who are always surrounding... Edwina. Maybe. She had a lot of people her around her. Her nurse was great. Ah, she could die at any second. She's like, oh, I feel fine. She's like, ah, she could be dead in a minute. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> then we have Gretchen, who is played by Neva Patterson. You should know her. She is uh, Ray, uh, Rick, uh, Mike Donovan's mom in V. Yep. Yeah, Both yeah, episodes yeah. of V. Yeah. Uh, yep. Who is Gretchen? The I one don't... that uh, the boss, Skyler, was hooking up with. Oh, God. At the very beginning when the oh. secretary walks in. One of the in. many people he was looking up with. He's like making out with her on his okay. desk. And she was also in All the President's Men. Oh, wow. Good movie. David and Lisa, an affair to remember. Mm. So many people in this movie are dead. I mean, I know these are movies that are 40 years old, but. A lot of the people in this movie are old, old to begin with. Here's one of the guys that's far down in the uh, cast list that you th- thought would be higher up. Michael Ensign played Mr. Mifflin. Is that the one who was trying to tattle on him all the time? Yeah. He's from Ghostbusters. He's from Ghostbusters. He played the hotel manager in Ghostbusters. Yeah. He was also Behringer's aide in War Games. Was he like the... the he was uh, also in Titanic. Yes. He was Guggenheim. Which one was he in this movie? He had a beard. He was like always trying to... He went to someone to, to tell on Steve was Martin. Was he the one that yeah. he was, was in the always bathroom tell, with yeah, him? Yeah. Yeah. That he's guy. like, when he's talking to Edwin, he's uh-huh. like, talk like a man. And he's like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that guy, okay. Yeah, yeah. Then we have... The divorce lawyer, played by Nan Martin. Oh, the lady? Mm-hmm. The, the, so the wife's divorce lawyer. I have okay. heard it. She's in Shallow How, uh-huh. Cast Away, one episode of the Star Trek The Next Generation, but she was also in A Nightmare on Elm Street, Dream Warriors. Oh, that's three or four, three, right? Three. 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 That's the best yep. one. And then playing the court clerk was Basil Hoffman. <laughs> Basil? That was He's, weird having a male court clerk uh, doing the typing. I, I don't know yeah. why. Yeah. Why I think that's like a weird thing to have a man doing. I don't know, but, but as soon as they said, "Can you read that back?" and a guy was reading it back, I'm like, "What?" I'm here's like, be a woman here's a good one. But Har- why did you bring him up? Is is he? Did you bring him up? Just, no, just oh, yeah. I thought maybe he was somebody. No, nope. okay. Uh, Harvey Vernon played the judge, and he was the old man clerk in Teen Wolf. Remember when he says, "Give me a cake of beer." That's the clerk. That's oh. <laughs> he's the, the clerk. Okay, yeah. Okay, yeah. He was also uh, in one episode of General Hospital out of thirteen thousand four hundred and eight. <laughs> do you know which remember. episode that was? Yeah, I do. <laughs> um, but here's the last one I had. He played the minister, David Bird. He played he was in Tango and Cash. 
Lost Highway, The Hudsucker Proxy, The Man with Two Brains. He was in. Oh, okay. But he was also in two episodes of Seinfeld, one of them being the finale, and the other one was Season 7, Episode 9, The Sponge. He's the pharmacist who sells the sponges <laughs> to Elaine. Oh, my God. And is that why he's in the final, too? Because it's the same character he's doing finale? Oh, yeah. right, um, yeah. <laughs> so you got him and you got Jeffrey R.R. R. Wood. Nice. <laughs> From Seinfeld, Seinfeld. Yeah, so we got that Seinfeld. That's all that for cash. Do you have anybody else that you saw in there? Uh, no, no, because no, obviously I was picking up the V people, and that's, yeah, I think, the only people, people that I got. V, two people from Seinfeld, one General Hospital. <laughs> no, um, I should have known that one. <laughs> Out of the 13,000 episodes. <laughs> so the beginning of this movie starts off with like a opening credits... That seemed, montage. It yeah. seemed like right out of the eighties, where it was just like a day in the it life right of him, of like going through his <laughs> yeah. daily routine, and just I was like, this seems such a weird thing for a movie to have, where they were just kind of like playing. Well, that's the, like how the, Pee-wee's Big Adventure started. Yeah, but his daily routine was a lot more interesting. Yeah, that whole <laughs> Rube Goldberg breakfast thing going <laughs> and stuff. But it was just so strange how. They had the movie start like that, and then it ended with him like kind of like getting to the office and ready for his day at work. I was mm-hmm. like, hmm, okay, I guess that's a thing. Uh, um, real quick, Steve Martin and Victoria Tennant met on the set of this movie, like you said, okay. and they were married in 86 oh. and divorced around eight years later in 94. So that's why she was in uh, L.A. Story also, because they were together. That was together. 91, yeah. yeah. Um, so Steve Martin, I don't know if you know this or not, Dana, but he is a accomplished ukulele player. Oh, no, I did and not know that. Banjo, banjo. Sorry, yes. Oh, okay. So that's why I was like, it's when it started off. He's playing the guitar. I was like, oh, nice. And like he's working his he real has, like, like skills, like yeah. bluegrass albums. Oh, that he really? He's done banjo, concerts yeah. where he just shows up to play. Oh, you not know what? Now like, you say all this, it's very yeah. familiar. Yeah. So yeah, he he does concerts where it's not comedy. It's him just playing. So yeah. I thought it was cool that he got to play the guitar in this. And to speak on that. When he's having whatever later on, when they're at the uh, party where the end scene's gonna happen, um, and he's messing up the guitar solo because he needs control of the oh, left. Yeah. He's like, I need control yeah. of that hand. And she's like, Burr. and and the conductor or whatever says to the sax guy, it's like that dude's a freak. I'm like, because he messed up like the guitar solo for like, three seconds. Yeah, it was like, really why, weird. Like, why is he, he kept eyeballing him? Like, why is he making such a big deal about Steve Martin messing up that <laughs> one little part? <laughs> So this was the final uh, cinema film of actress Selma Diamond, okay. who was also a writer, mainly worked in television, was particularly n- well known for her voice work. Oh, I thought you meant like, when you said a writer, like she was the writer on this. That would no, be so cool. In if, television, like, she did a lot of writing. It said, yeah. Um, this was the fourth and final film that Steve Martin made with Carl Reiner. The other three, uh, Man with Two Brains, The Jerk, and. We just talked about it. I've already forgotten everything we talked about. Dead men don't oh, wear plaid. Don't plaid, of course, because he's mm. in that too. For God's sake. <laughs> mm. uh, that movie was not good, Dana. Don't watch it. Okay. When uh, Edwina asks for a cigarette and they all throw a pack of cigarettes in her face, which mm-hmm. cigarette did she pick? I know what brand she picked. Oh, I did not see uh, what she brand picked. She picked Merit. Ooh. I remember Anthony, friend of the show, Anthony smoked Merits back in the day. <laughs> I was always like, what a weird cigarette that is a weird one, man. When everybody else is smoking like Camels and Marlboros, you're smoking Merits? And I feel like back in uh, the 80s, ladies were smoking Virginia Slims. And one of the packs was definitely looked Virginia Slim mm-hmm. like because yeah. it was that like aqua blue looking yeah. kind of pack. And someone had a thinner pack. Someone too. had a pack of reds. It looked like Marlboro Reds. You could just see the red on it. But the merits. Were there any camels? No. Yeah, no, no. Okay. There were three packs. <laughs> one looked like a pack of Marlboro Reds, but I couldn't see what yeah. it was. The merits were obviously what it was, and she took a cigarette out of that. And then the other person That's had like a, getting some Benson and looked, Hedges. Benson and Hedges. Oh my God, <laughs> man. <laughs> times, What's that man. one? Carter? Carter? Or? Do you remember the Capris? Those, like, I yeah. mean, I'm yes. sure you as a female uh, remember those. All the girls smoke Capris. Adrian used to smoke Capris. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I remember back in the old days, I mean, we're talking the old, old days, like 30 years ago or something like that, when I would be out of cigarettes and I'd take one out of my girlfriend's purse and it'd be like a Capri. I'm like, <laughs> I'd snap the filter off. I'm like, I can't, I mean, what's the point of this thing even having a filter on it? This so, was uh, part of a mid late 1980s Hollywood cycle of body swap, body switch comedies, which also <laughs> included Vice Versa in 1988, I remember 18 that. again in mm-hmm. 1988, like Father Like Son in 87, and Big also in 88. And the wow, film man. was originally going to star Chevy Chase and Goldie Hawn. 
would have worked with them because yes, I think they have. I agree. Well, they have chemistry they for sure. Foul they did foul play. play. Yeah. So yeah. you said um, eighteen again. I, I don't remember that one at all. Is that Judge Reinhold? No, that's the, George Burns. George Burns and the uh, kid. I, he Kirk was in, Cameron. No. Kirk Cameron and Dudley Moore were the other one that you said. Uh, e, like father, like, like son. Father, like, like father, like son. son. Okay. 18 again was uh, George Burns. I don't remember the kid's name. I don't think he was anybody really And then famous. the other one was Judge Reinhold. There was a Judge Reinhold one, wasn't there? Yeah. As far as they admit, well, I guess Freaky Friday. That would be Friday, vice versa was Judge Reinhold, Freaky I think. Okay. Friday was earlier than this. That was like Speaking late of that, 70s, they're right? Di- oh. Or maybe early 80s. Freaky Friday? Oh, the only Freaky Friday I know is... The Lindsay Lohan. Lindsay Lohan and Jamie Lee Curtis. Charlie, there was a Charlie Schlatter. Phenomenal. Jodie Foster version. Oh, I never saw that was the kid. Oh, no. It's Charlie Schlatter from Police Academy fame. Oh. Which one's him? Which one's him? Which, Who's what, he? What's he? Who and, him? Um, Who is him? Is he Steve Gutenberg? <laughs> 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 there he is. Oh, right, right. Okay. Oh, okay. I guess I know who that is. And vice versa was uh, Judge Reinhold and um, yeah, who was the old the the older one? That then? was it was him and see I would have thought he would be the adult Fred Savage. Yeah, okay, Fred Savage. Wonder see, years. I still think he was a kid because he was just a couple years before that in Swoozy Kurtz. Kurtz on yeah, Swoozy Kurtz. By the way, not that that name <laughs> is in this, but the girl uh, Terry, the British girl. Yeah. What is with that kind of like... It was a bad accent, right? Well, I mean, I think she's actually British. She sounded like Sally Kellerman a lot. Sally Kellerman, who you might know from Back to School with Rodney Dangerfield. Yep. And yes. she was Hot Lips in the original yeah, MASH yeah, yeah. movies. Yep, yep. And they have that like British accent where they like... They put the actual the lisp on the end of the words. Are like, talking to dancers? She sounds yeah. like she's like eighty years old when she's talking, and I'm like, why yeah. is this young girl talking like that? To and me, it sounded fake. It might. It it, it sounded yeah. weird for sure. Yeah. It's yeah. almost like they're closing their teeth and they're talking in their throat. But it's that time, like when you go back and you watch movies from like the '30s. Even American women talked funny. Like you, you don't talk like that anymore. Yes, but like just this the, was like the it was 30s. really. <laughs> It was really weird, and maybe it was just an older way of talking yeah. then. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe. It was like a rich way of talking. A too, rich, you know? yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you got to put the lower jaw on the stick. Mr. Yeah. <laughs> um, it said that, uh, where did I see it right? Uh, Victoria Tennant was so smitten with Steve that <laughs> on the first day of production, she rushed home to tell her male roommate he had three days to move out. Wow. I mean, did she know she was going to hook up with Steve I Martin? So. I guess she yeah, threw yeah. it at him. Jeez, good for Steve. He was just like, huh? I was just, just sitting the here. the first of three films. It hit me right in the face, Dana. What was I supposed I to do? <laughs> this is the first of three films that Steve and Lily made together. Do you know what the other oh, two were? Oh, Jesus, no. I don't remember them being in anything together. In 1993, they made And the Band Played On. Never mm. saw it. And in 2009, The Pink Panther 2. Oh, never saw it. There was a those. Pink Panther movie in 2009? I mean, yeah. the sequel to Damn. the first one, I yeah. guess. But but what? I thought they were in the 90s. I yeah. guess not. I never saw either of those. And if there was a third, I didn't see that either. <laughs> Wait, was Beyonce in one of the Pink Panther no, movies? No, she was in Austin Powers yeah, story. Yeah, Austin Powers. I remember her in that. She was Foxy Cleopatra. Maybe she... Foxy I, don't think, I don't think she was in a Pink Panther. I don't... But I didn't see those movies, so I was maybe she was. maybe it was like a song that maybe she had a song. Well, I don't think she was famous in 2009 yet. I don't know. 2009? No. That was really? 15 years ago. I mean, she's like 40-something now. She must have been I think she was. She had, she had to be years ago. Even with... Maybe. Yeah, she but you know, maybe Child. she did have a song yeah. in Pink Panther. Because maybe that's why I'm thinking maybe it's she possible. had a music video, and that's why I'm thinking she was in it. I need to get to the bottom of this. I mean, She's probably been famous for like 25 years yeah. now. Yeah. I guess it Early never happened, but Listen, DreamWorks I don't want to admit that that was that long ago because it really makes you feel old. <laughs> it didn't happen, I don't think, but DreamWorks announced in 2012 that a remake of this comedy was in development. Yeah, I don't, I've never heard of the remake being made or coming out, so I don't think that did ever happen. No. Nah. Uh, Beyonce was in the Pink Panther. Okay. Oh, okay. 2006. Like I said, we didn't know. Never we didn't saw watch it, the movies. So. Me either. I just must have seen the music video. And I know it was Steve Martin and uh, what's his name? Uh, Jean Rousseau. What, what's his name? Is that his name? The French guy. Oh, when you need a French uh, guy. He's in everything. Gerard Depardieu. Not Gerard, not that guy. The oh, one, my God. The one that was in, like in Mission Impossible. Gene Reno. Is that his name? Gene yeah. Reno. Okay, yeah, that guy. Do you remember is. when uh, uh, Gerard Depardieu, whatever, got hit in the face with a pigeon? Now you're on thinking a of roller Fabio. coaster? 
That I am thinking of Fabio. Damn it. Oh, on a roller coaster. Or something yeah, like you're thinking of Fabio. That was crazy because he was like on a roller coaster. <laughs> and and just, just got the roller coaster the stops and you just see him. He has like a blood all over his face. <laughs> I like that you got Gerard Depardieu and Fabio mixed up. I did. <laughs> Wasn't something with him, Jar Depardieu? Wasn't he in a movie where like he hooked up with his like daughter, a, a kid? His, or something he was like helping that? his daughter seem older, so he was pretending to be her boyfriend uh, so she could get another. Oh, I, I, never, I never saw that yeah. movie. I've never seen any movie. Me with either, him in it, but, but I've heard plenty about it. I remember it, yeah. hearing about that movie. I'm like, that sounds gross. <laughs> Now, if Logan came up to me and said, Dad, you want to go out to the bar and help me hook up with a girl? I'll be like, let's go, dude. Like, I'll be yeah. your wingman. And Logan would never ask me to be his wingman because no. he'd be like, I don't need a wingman. Yeah. Daniel might ask me to be his wingman. He's like, you're just going to bring me down. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, that side of the bar just got like old and fat. I don't know what happened. <laughs> I'm out of notes. Um, I only have like silly notes that I took as I was watching the movie. Like, well, she's she says she's worth $20 million, yeah. which I guess in 1984 was a lot of money, but $20 million isn't getting you that mansion, which that is, is gigantic. Was, first and of all, it was gorgeous. All those that, that, servants. Like that, she probably could have afforded it. Maybe. You think, yeah. I mean, like, I, I don't know what, I, I didn't even do the math. I should have done the math. But even if $20 million is like $100 million today, if it's five times yeah. as much, that looks like a billionaire's house. That yes. is not a regular but old one of the mill millionaire's house. It's also, house. see, I think it's generational wealth. She was, she said her grandfather. So that's how yeah. she could still so have that house. So the house could still been passed down. Yeah. Yeah. She, maybe the mortgage is paid off, she's just paying the property taxes. Yeah, kind of something thing. like that. True. Yeah. Um, then, that, then it's not as difficult to pay yeah. just that. Yeah. Yeah. That was one of my more favorite lines in this movie when she was taught, when Steve Martin was talking to her about how her grandfather, you know, whatever he said, raped and pillaged, you know, the people to make all his money. And she's like, your family probably did it too. And he's like, well, my grandfather was a barber, so he didn't have that many <laughs> options or something like that. It was pretty funny how he just said, like, the fact that his grandfather was a barber. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, that made me laugh. Um how can he after after his boss called after the boss says you know this woman's crazy and all that stuff and he's like i think there's a partnership in you i want you to represent me and he's like i'm ready to become a real serious lawyer and then the next thing he does is go to wherever with the dog again like the dog yeah. was walking in i was like <laughs> how can you be taken seriously as a respectable lawyer if you're bringing your dog with you listen i love my dogs i would take them to work with me if I didn't have to watch them for eight yeah. hours a day, yeah. but uh, how can you expect to be taken seriously if you're bringing your dog along with you? Especially when you're a lawyer. Yeah, I mean, and, and I mean, his, his poor not... friend there, like he just drops him off with the blind dude, and, then, <laughs> and that dog was obviously not a seeing eye dog. Yeah. <laughs> um, do they not have indoor plumbing in Tibet? Because they said the dude uh, was from Tibet. Yeah. But he kept flushing the toilet whenever the telephone oh rang. Oh, my God. That was so, like, like, come on. <laughs> and then, then he finally figured, oh. Yeah. That's well, dumb. I mean, that whole, that whole plot was ridiculous that they kept trying to get in touch with him, calling him. If he doesn't know how to answer a phone, he's never going to pick it up. Like, yeah. he's never, if yeah. he doesn't know the concept of what a phone is, yeah. he'll never get it. But the fact that he was flushing the toilet <laughs> and the phone no, rang, yeah. I was like, I guess Tibet doesn't have indoor play because he was mar a marvel at that. And Michelle actually commented maybe that. Maybe he was like a, one of those monks that you you, you give something away. Maybe, maybe he gave maybe. away indoor plumbing. Michelle mm. pointed out that that toilet was really low to the ground. So Tara like, said the same thing. She's like, that's really low to the does ground. Does that mean we have Tara and Michelle scores? Michelle I do, yeah. walked out. Uh, she always does yeah. that. You I have think, a Tara score? Yeah. I think Michelle was paying attention at one point, and all of a sudden she realized. She's like, I got to leave for a couple minutes. Oh my gosh, I've been in here too long. <laughs> I'm sorry, I leave. He'll ask me for a score. Um, I said that I, I actually had this in my notes. This movie feels a lot like Liar Liar. Um, I never saw that. Ah, oh, Jim Carrey, good I've one, seen man, that, yeah. really good. One. That was actually a good Jim Carrey movie. I'm not a big fan of him, but and I like that. My last note, which is Russell Crowe was on Rogan today. <laughs> okay, my last note, which is a very uninteresting that. note, is how come Procta, which I wrote down here, I guess that was his name, but Procta. How come? Lassa. Okay, Procta how can he uh, understand Edwina's English, but no one else's? Whenever <laughs> she spoke to him, he understood exactly what she was saying. But every time anybody else, yeah. back and bolt, back and bolt, <laughs> up, down, <laughs> what, what, but everything else is he's confused by. But whenever she talks to him, he knows exactly what she's saying so that's the end of my notes <laughs> what about you danny you got anything you want to add or no. should we get the scores no i don't i mean i cringed a lot of this movie it was you know it, really? it, it and i don't want to say it reminded me of jim carrey because obviously this was well before his time but i feel like 
the the physical comedy with the hand and the thing it just I never liked Jim Carrey either when he did acted that way. I think it's very and, I don't like that kind yeah, of humor. I like yeah. humor like slapstick humor. I right. do like that. But this I did, I just find that very lazy and boring. Yeah. It just didn't do it for me that part. Yeah, I didn't and like that, it either. I don't like that. Ugh. Yeah. And the the scene in the courtroom is just it's, a, it's that absurd. That was ridiculous. The, really the spitting absurd. and everything like that was yeah. ridiculous. I, I Although, just don't know yeah. why they even thought that was like like that was like believable. Like, come on. I was really kind of hoping in some way she would get her form back and didn't have to be in the blonde lady's body. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, whatever that happened. Yeah. So, well, it was fine. Back in bowl. Back in bowl. <laughs> What's your score then? I thought it was funny Should when she scores? went into the... What's that? I got, uh, scores yeah, the, uh, the only other thing I wanted to point out, like talking about the slapstick of it all, there was a scene where the at the end where they're... For whatever reason, the blind guy gets dragged along for the mission. I mean, when he's like, when, call, he says, Don't this, when, or, like hold no, this. when he's calling out, he's like, Oh, I think someone just shot a gun. He's yes. like, Oh, it sounds like there's a fight. And yeah. like, as it's all happening, he's just describing it all. But it felt very Three Stooges when they were, the three of them were going through the house and tripping over things yeah. and knocking things over. And they're all, the- yeah, they're all very close yeah. together. And, that was big uh, for all three of them to go to the door at the same time. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. So, yeah I like th- the blind guy. Was I liked his character. He was entertaining. He was funny. Um, he's hot during these eight early yeah. mini movies. You know yeah. What I, mean? I didn't recognize him, but. Now that you say he's he was the he judge, was the judge in in liar liar, liar, yeah. liar, which brings us back I to know, it's crazy me that thinking that, that he was, like that Jim Carrey was act acts like Steve Martin or whatever in this movie. I mean, it might be a uh, yeah, you know, he looked up to him, probably listened to his albums and shit, yeah, you know, all those comedy albums, yeah. You know. yeah. Oh, and he, Steve Martin even said, at one point in this movie said, "Excuse me," like "Excuse yeah. me," yeah. which was like one of his biggest things yeah. back then. But he never did those things in the movies yeah. that was like just reserved for a stand up yeah, yeah, yeah. or, like or whatever right yeah. yeah um i don't have michelle's score i have my score all right this movie i i had fun watching this um i would probably at some Real point quick, watch this again I, I always forget to do this but the critics were 85 and the audience was 67 all right well i'm mm. i'm kicking a field goal between those t- i gave this movie a 70 um 70 i thought it was fun again. i would probably watch it again at some point in my life if it was on TBS on a Saturday yeah. afternoon, I was just like, oh, all of me cool. Mm. I, eh, this movie was meh for me. It was mid, as the kids say. Yeah, kids say mid. Yeah, um, I give it a 60. I'll never watch it again, but um, I didn't hate it. It had its good points. Um, Tara gave it a 62. Not 60 as well, a 62. 62, okay. Yeah. Um, I won't go into it. I don't like Steve Martin because I've talked about all that. There was a few things I enjoyed in this movie. I can't name them all because it's just Lily Tomlin was basically who I liked in this movie. Um, I'll never watch this movie again. It gets a 49 from me. How did you guys watch this movie? I went to Amazon. I yeah. rented it on Amazon. I went to go rent it on Amazon. I and watched then it, it just, for free on it Amazon. It just shot me to freebie or yes, freebie, freebie or whatever. So With I had like two or three commercials. commercials. I had like yeah. commercials in the middle. That's why I didn't but want to so do it. Many it was also annoying. Like I couldn't do the subtitles, which was a the Subtitles didn't this. work, yeah. And it was it was, it was letter bar or yeah, squish. I was like, oh man. I rented it then. I was like watching this. I'm like, am I... Tried to go back and rent it, and every time I hit watch, it just said watch for free. And I'm like, oh, oh no, no, I went into Apple TV. Oh, I rented okay. it on Apple, Apple TV. Did you yeah. have it in full screen? Like it wasn't letterboxed? No, it was. It, no, was. it was the full screen. Yeah. 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 I, I should have watched it that way. I was kind of like shaking my head the first like 10 minutes. I'm like, this looks such like such Freebie crap. sucks, huh? Yeah. It, well, it had at least six commercial breaks, and it tells you one of six one as of you're six watching. Is a lot. So six commercials. <laughs> In six commercial breaks, yeah, but it, it counts down. So like two and a half minutes was, or two to two I and a half that, minutes. Man. I don't remember him being that. Yeah, long. Yeah, I always go, oh my god, one of six, and then I'm like, all right, we're four. I was probably six. like getting up to go to yeah. bed yeah. or whatever. But yeah, yeah it was. Uh, that's how I, I was kind of disappointed. Just the quality of it looked terrible. Yeah. Um, when the when the credits were yeah, running, it at was the very. very um, they grainy, it's like fuzzy. It when looks, the credits you know were I mean? run uh, at the very beginning, when the credits were running, and it just like it, it just like says Steve Martin has his name, and it just says Lily Tomlin. It was almost like they were shaking, as if like someone was like yeah, I noticed that before, this thing, yes. and I'm watching. I'm like, why is their name That's shaking? How they did it. We lay it down on the thing. We've and seen that recently in another movie we, we were okay. watching. And it was probably and another. We both complained like it was shaking. Yeah, I don't yeah. remember what it was. 
So next week we have Streets of Fire, and then after that we are going to start our Halloween. Halloween celebration, and we're kicking that off with Nightmare on Elm Street, kids. So get ready for that. Nice. And download, rate, subscribe, review on Spreaker. Do all those things for the exciting new podcast on all of our socials. Um, the Jazoo on Instagram, Jazoo seventy four on X slash Twitter. This has been the exciting new podcast. I'm Jason. A Gonzo one on Twitter. A Gonzo nineteen seventy on Instagram. I'm Andy. Dana Caps on TikTok. Dana Caps seventy seven on Instagram. I'm Dana. See, when there's no guests, this music lasts forever. Mm-hmm. We're trying to coax. Uh, so we didn't. We didn't mess up Mm-mm. at the end. There, we were good. <laughs> we're pros. We're pros. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>